Hi, I'm Bob, and this is Healing School. Thank you for joining us today here at Grace City Church. And on Thursdays, we hold Healing School every week. And I just want to welcome you and thank you for being a part of this. And I believe we have a good word from the Lord for you today. Why? Because we want you healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a title for today's message, and I want to call it Hearing and Listening. Now, this is something I picked up on several weeks ago, and Pastor Justin had been ministering, and I thought, Lord, you're speaking to me about this, about hearing and listening. And now, what do I mean about hearing and listening, and what does that have to do with healing? Well, there is a difference between hearing and listening, and I'm sure most of you that, especially if you're got any age on you, you probably experienced this in the past, whether you're talking to your children or you were talking with your parents. And sometimes we hear things, but we don't listen. Sometimes we listen and don't hear. And sometimes we just don't do either one of them. But that affects us, that affects our lives, and it can affect how you are healed. Um, let's... Uh, Let's talk about selective hearing. I can remember uh, in times past when my children were little and I would tell them something or correct them or tell them not to do something and they would just go on like they did not hear me. And I'll say, did you hear me? And they'll say, yeah, I heard you. And I said, but were you listening? Did you hear what I said? And sometimes it takes a little more than just hearing with our our little appendages on the side of our head, sometimes we have to listen on the inside of what is being said. And that's what it is like when it comes to healing. We need to listen to the word of God. So let's look at an example in the Bible of an example of hearing, but not listening. Okay. I'll just, I'll, I'll word it that way. And that's in Genesis chapter three, when Eve was in the garden, it talks about how she was out there and she had heard from Adam. She had to have heard from Adam about the two trees in the garden. And he had told her, he said, we're not supposed to eat from those trees. But when she was challenged by the Satan, when she was challenged by him, she changed the words that she had heard from Adam. She says, well, we're not supposed to even touch it. Well, that was never said. So she listened to Adam, but she did not hear what was being said. So she changed things to be her own way. In other words, she had selective hearing. She wanted to hear certain things, but she also wanted to hear other things, especially what was coming from Satan's mouth. So that's an example of selective hearing. Let's look at the word here, okay? In the Greek, it comes from the word akuo, and it means to be endowed with the faculty of hearing. It means to not be deaf, okay? So if you can hear my words right now, you can hear. Now, hear means to attend to, consider what is or what has been said, to understand, perceive the sense of what is said. When we look at the word hearing in that respect, we know that you are more, you are receiving more than what's just coming through the flappers on the side of your head. You are, you are paying attention. You are perceiving something, not just hearing it. You are under getting an understanding to hear something means to perceive by the ear, what is announced in one's presence to, to learn, to to perceive something, to get something by hearing a thing comes to one's ears to find out, to learn, to give ear to a teaching or a teacher to comprehend and to, and understand. So let's look at a couple of scriptures here. Trust me, we're going someplace with this. We're going someplace so that you can receive your healing because I want you to hear what the word of God is telling you. So let's go to Matthew chapter five, verse 13. In that scripture there, it says, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. 
Okay, now, if I spoke that to you and I said, you are the salt of the earth, are you going to hear what I said? Are you going to really perceive what I said? Well, let's go to Luke 14, 34 through 35. Jesus said, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land or for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Hearing was important to Jesus. He wanted us to hear his word. Why? Not just with the flappers on the side of our head, but he wanted us to perceive and understand what his word was going to be able to accomplish in our life. Let's look at another example from Genesis of hearing, okay? In in Genesis chapter 1, you go through chapter 1, how many times does God declare things to be good? On the first day, it is good. The second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and on the seventh day, seven times, God has declared it is good. Was this just for our sake so we could know how the earth was created? No, he wanted us to know that everything that he made was good. Do we still cling to that? Do we still believe that everything that he made was good? Or have we surrendered that idea of goodness to what's happened in the world? Since it all started out as good and was made by God, and he didn't change his mind about the good, why are we not clinging to the good as he started it? Sure, a curse came on to the world. That's not good. And not many good things came into the world because of that. But that doesn't change the fact that his good is still prevalent today. We need to cling to the good, his good. The devil and the curse did not overpower God's good. Did you catch that? The devil and all that he's done has never overpowered God's good. When he declared it good, it was and it is and it always will be. It only The devil only offered a choice that man was never supposed to have. We were only supposed to have the good. We weren't supposed to have that choice. But that's been thrown into the mix. But yet so much of mankind has released what God has made good, and we've surrendered to the things of the Satan. Yet many either fail to cling to the good or they reject it for something they think is better or is more correct. That's what we see in the world today. People are surrendering God's good and going after something that they think is better. You know what? That sounds like what Eve did. That sounds like what Adam did. We can't do that. We need to grab on to the good. We need to relish the good that God put into the world. And guess what? Healing is a part of that good. You know, in Genesis chapter 4, I'm going to open up to that. Genesis chapter 4. I want to prove something here that despite the fall, despite the curse coming, man had a choice. Man had a choice. And we'll go to Genesis chapter 4 and look at verses 6 and 7. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Now this is after Cain and Abel offered their sacrifices to God. And God found Abel's sacrifice pleasing, but Cain he was not pleased with. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Look what, look what the Lord revealed there. He revealed that even despite the fall and the curse coming on mankind, mankind still had a choice. He could have overruled the voice of Satan. He could have overruled the evil that had come into the world. 
but Cain decided not to. And what did that lead to? It led to him murdering his brother. Healing is good, yet many reject it. We see this throughout society. We see this in people mocking God, mocking Christians, mocking those that believe in divine healing, and, and whole denominations say, no, this is not for today. It does not, it does not happen anymore. This died with the apostles. Oh, that they, 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 they may need healing. They may want healing for their body. They may have sickness. They may have a friend. They say, can you pray for me? But, you know, are they willing to listen? Are they willing to hear the truth that's spoken through God's word? Many have a selective hearing and therefore pick and choose what they want to believe. But we need to believe all of God's word and healing is a part of that. In 2 Peter, the first chapter, verses 2 through 4, it reads, and this is in the New King James Version, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us, and I've got this underlined and boldly written in my Bible. He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust." That word pertain in the Greek, it means to the advantage of, it is the word pros, by the way. It describes an action of moving or assessing something to one's advantage. God's word pertains to us. It's to our advantage. In Proverbs 4.20, it reads, my son, give attention to my words. Whoa. Give attention to my words. How do we do that? We listen. We perceive. We incline our ear unto my sayings. Incline your ear unto my sayings, he says. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Why would we reject his word? It brings healing. It says, give attention. Give attention to my words. That is the word kasab. It means hearken, attend, heed, hear, incline, marked, regarded, mark well. We, we really want to nail this down. We want to make it a part of our life. We want to make it a part of the good that God created in this world, in our lives, for our benefit and the benefit of others. We need healing. We need to not only hear, but we need to listen. And we not only need to listen, we need to hear. In James 1.19, it reads, every person should be quick to hear. James 1.22, don't just hear God's word, but obey it. Proverbs 12.15, the wise man listens. Proverbs 19.20, listen to gain wisdom. Mark 4, 24, Jesus says, pay attention to what you hear. Proverbs 2, 2, make your ear attentive. Luke eleven twenty eight, 28, but he said, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Romans 10, 17, but faith comes from hearing and hearing and hearing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and hearing God's word. We need to hear. We need to listen. We need to incorporate that into our studies, into our, our reading of God's word so that we can be healed. In Matthew 8, 1 through 27, this is out of the New Translation. I want to read this. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly, a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. 
Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing. Now, I want you to pay attention to that. It says that Jesus said he is willing. That means God is willing to heal. You can't throw that out. He said, be healed. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priests and let them examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, an officer came and pleaded with him. Lord, my young servant lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy that you come into my home. Just say the word where you are and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under authority by my superior officers and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go and they go and come and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Did you catch that? When Jesus heard this. Jesus wasn't just hearing with his flappers on the side of his head. Jesus heard what the man was saying. Jesus recognized the authority the man understood. Turning to those who were following him, he said, now notice he didn't say this just to that centurion. He said to those that were following him, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. You know, that probably shook a few people up. And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east and west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. That had to shake up a lot of people. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That definitely got some people's attention. But to tell you the truth, a lot of them were just listening with selective hearing. Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, go back home because you believed it has happened. And the young servant was healed that same hour. When Jesus arrived at Peter's house, Peter's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever, but when Jesus touched her hand, the fever left her. Then she got up and prepared a meal for him. That evening, many demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. He cast out the evil spirits with a simple command, and he healed all the sick. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, who said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he instructed his disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. I want you to recognize here that Jesus heard what people were asking of him. He listened to their faith and he acted accordingly. But then he also got to Peter's house and he raised up Peter's mother-in-law and he didn't have to listen to anything. He just acted on his own word and what he knew and what the father told him to do. Jesus listened all the time. Jesus declared in the beginning, it is good. We need to cling to the good. Anyway, then it goes on. Then one of the teachers of the religious law said to him, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. Another of his disciples said, Lord, first let me return home to bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me now. Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Then Jesus got into the boat and started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly fierce storms struck the lake with waves breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves, and suddenly there was a great calm. 
The disciples were amazed. Who is this man? They asked. Even the winds and the waves obey him. You know what? All creation listens to the word of God. The wind and the waves obeyed him. He spoke and they heard. He has spoken to us and we need to hear. Hearing and listening brings about healing. Do you want to build your faith for healing, both yours and for others? You know, when it comes to healing, we want to receive healing for ourselves. But one of the things Jesus told us to do, he said, go. He said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Did we listen to what he said? Or did we turn around, let go of the good and grab onto what some denomination has told us? We need to listen to what he said. Do you want to build your faith for healing, both yours and for others? Then what are you going to do about it? Who are you going to call? It reminds me of that movie, that uh, Ghostbusters or something like that. Who are you going to call? Well, guess what? Romans 10, 13 says, For whoever calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word saved is the word sozo. It means to save a suffering one from perishing, one suffering from disease, to make well, to heal, to restore, to health. Jesus came to save us. Our salvation is based in him. Our salvation was based on the work of the cross, his sacrifice, the stripes on his back. By his stripes, we were healed. That didn't deliver salvation for us. That delivered physical healing for us. We cannot deny the good that God established at the very beginning of the world. We need to cling to it. We need to listen to his word. We need to hear what he is saying. Are hearing and listening important? Yes. Just as important as listening and hearing is. I know it's a play on words, but we need to hear what the word of God is speaking to us. And not just with healing, with everything else that God has provided in his word. He wants to prosper us. His word talks about prospering us. I want to prosper. I want to be in full health so that I can accomplish what he has called me to do. I want you to accomplish what he's called you to do. We're the body of Christ. If one hurts, the other one hurts. But if one gets healed, the other one's going to get healed. That's the way I look at it. We need to hear his word. We need to treasure it. We need to be active in seeing that people are healed. So if you're hurting today, if you're sick, if, if you're having emotional problems, if you're having psychological problems, if, if you're lonely, loneliness can be a sickness to a degree. If you need anything, go to the word. And if you don't know where to go in the word, if, if you're not sure, you know, there's resources out there available. There are people you can go to a Bible believing church like Grace City Church right here. You can come here. You can ask questions. We will listen. We will hear what you are saying. And then we will pray with you and we will believe and stand in faith that by the stripes on Jesus back, you were healed. I want to thank you for joining me today for healing school. Like I said, we do this every Thursday and we would encourage you to watch our programs and the different people that are ministering to you. And we welcome you to join us here at, at Grace City Church here in Harrison, Arkansas. You can go to our website at gracecitychurch.tv and you can pull up our video archives and whatnot and you can listen and watch some of the stuff there or on Facebook. And uh, if you need prayer for healing, you can contact us at hello at gracecitychurch.tv. That's hello at gracecitychurch.tv. Or you can call us at 870-741-9099. Leave a message and one of our team members will get back with you. 
we want you healed. We want you whole. And we want you to be able to grab a hold of everything that God has in his word so that you can be healed and that you can go out and lay hands on the sick and see them recover. God bless you. You have a blessed day and be healed in Jesus' name.